So let's get started with our first evidence-based tool called I around idea generation. So this process that we're going to talk about a little bit is going to be designed to help you each think about how do you go from maybe something that inspires you or something that interests you or even that idea that you have to actually deciding this is an idea worth taking through the startup process. So I've really tried to simplify this down into really three simple things to think about. So you'll see a lot in this kind of these workshops that will try and put things very tactically and in rules of three oftentimes. So really I found that there's three key steps to idea generation. It starts with research, and it's really, really simple, basic research that you start out with. Then, a brain, then brainstorming, and finally evaluation. These are really the three key elements and pillars of your process for idea generation. So generally, when you start with in this process, you should do a little bit of self-reflection before you even start the research space to say what inspires you. So for those of you who have a startup idea, kind of what's your inspiration? I think you raised your hand. What are you inspired by in your startup concept? I guess I'm just really interested in how and involved with doctors making diagnosis and taking okay. that from being a mental process to being a little bit more concrete Great. in software. So generally you're talking about the medical industry and, and data is kind of an interesting area that you're inspired by, right? So that's an area of interest, so that's a good one. So that's what you ultimately start this process by, is figuring out what things are interesting to you. And for those of you that already have ideas, you may be able to unpack that and step up one level in terms of defining that in a broader sense of what is the industry you're interested in. For those of you that don't necessarily have an idea yet, you should also be thinking about what generally inspires you. What things do you do? What do you do at your job? What do you do for fun? So think there to start out with. So really, there's three parts of this. And the first part is what we're going to call basic level industry research. And this is just a little bit of time spent understanding what is the general industry you're exploring. So ultimately, the best friend in this is Google. <laughs> Go out there and type in a few Google searches to just find what you can learn. And one of the things that I found that's pretty interesting is to look for articles that have things like the challenges for 2013 in this industry, or top 10 problems facing, or emerging trends. Ultimately, just go out and spend a couple hours pulling articles that generally have thought leaders thinking about a space. It doesn't have to be anything scientific, it doesn't have to be anything formal, but you're just looking for things to start to frame the topic a little bit. And ultimately, your, your idea is to generate about four to six articles that you find to be particularly compelling. So again, spend several hours and just research. There's nothing right, there's nothing wrong. Dump them all into a Google document and just start to collect those articles. And if you can, maybe put a short little synopsis of what the article talks about. But ultimately, try and find the best four to six articles that you can find about the space. And again, some of the things you're looking for are things like challenges, problems, opportunity, the next big thing. So these are just a couple of Google searches that you can run. So this is the first step. Super easy, super simple. Go broadly and look for things about the industry or area you're talking about that you're interested in. And one of the other things that's important too is if you've got an area that you're interested in, you can also peruse the year-end editions of whatever publications are from that in that field. So if you're interested in the bank sector, look at places like American Banker and they usually have a year-end recap or a, a next year um, update. If you're looking at things that are a little bit more consumer, you might look to places like technology, art magazines, Wired, and the like. But go to places where you can find inspiration. And again, the goal is to get a series of four to six articles that you find to be interesting and compelling to help you understand the space. So step two, you're actually the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need to gather a group of your friends. Now these could be people that you consider to be co-founders if you're already kind of in the process of starting a business. These could be family members, just other classmates, people that you find to be good thinkers that you want to spend some time with. And you're actually going to organize them into a brainstorming session. Now, I recommend that you usually promise them something like beer at the end of this if they're going to spend time with you, but whatever it is, figure out a way that you can get between 90 minutes and 120 minutes of their time. And what you're going to do is you're going to lead them through a brainstorming session. Now what you'll do is before this brainstorming session, two to three days in advance, you're going to take those four to six articles and you're going to share them with them. And what you're going to ask them to do is actually go through and look for ideas of problems and solution pairs that they might find. So actually ask people to come up with a list of things that they find to be interesting. They might not necessarily have a great solution, but a problem. What are things that they're seeing about this industry that they find inspiring? Again, the idea here as much as possible is to get these friends and yourself thinking in problem and solution pairs. Because ultimately it's helpful to find the problem, but you want to have some ideas about how would you solve this. So some examples could be is that you're talking about doctors and diagnosis. It might be things like, what if we could use smartphones better in diagnosis? That's some kind of a solution pair. It's still very broad, but it's ultimately a way to take a concept and simplify it down. 
The other idea, important thing to do is what's the source of that idea? So do you have a place that you actually have found that idea? Maybe by talking to a family, family friend who's a doctor or talking to a, you know, a, your teenage sister who might actually be interested in, in doing something new. So where is the source of it and what are some of the things that they said that made you think this is a good idea? So ultimately then you're organizing this brainstorming session to just throw out ideas. And one of the things that I've found that works really well is actually to go in order around a circle. So don't just let one person rattle off idea after idea after idea, but actually say, you know, I'm going to go first and then I'm going to pass it to you to give your idea and keep going around until the ideas end. Usually this will take about 45 minutes to an hour. By the end of it, you'll have a list of ideas that are on there. And the second part of this process in the brainstorming session is actually to save about 30 minutes to go through and rank each of those ideas on a one to five basis. Really what you're doing is just a gut basis based on the room, kind of consensus driven on what is really interesting to you. So, at the end of this process, this first brainstorming session, what you're looking for is a list, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 50 ideas that you find to be fairly interesting, and you've given them an initial score. So ultimately look for those ideas and give them some kind of a gut rating if you can. So the third step that I think is just as important as well is to actually look and evaluate those ideas. So just imagine that you've got a list of, say, 40 to 50 ideas there, and you've narrowed them down into kind of some type of bands. The next step is figuring out what's worth going after. And this is where it's important to actually do more thorough process. And this is why I urge you to rank those first sets of ideas into some groups because you're going to spend between 30 and 90 minutes starting to do some more deep dive evaluation. And so I'm actually going to give you some tools after this that we'll send out to all of the participants here that will actually be an example of how you follow this inside kind of an evaluation form. But what you're really doing, again, is basic research here. You're going to go out on Google and you're going to search for things, search for things like competitors, understanding market size, margins, what are some of the limitations around it, what are expert opinions saying, and a particular one that I find important, has anyone tried something like this before and failed? You're trying to develop a list of information, and, and I like to call it a one to two page research report almost on each of these ideas. And again, it's nothing super formal, but just what you can get by spending about 30 to 90 minutes to go through and decide what's important. From there, you're actually going to try and see if you can decide which of these, based on a little bit of research, is the number one through number X rated idea. The idea here is to spend 30 to 90 minutes with each of these ideas evaluating what is the best candidate to go after. And this is the important part here. It feels like this is a lot of work. Like, I just, I got a great idea. Why don't I just go after this one idea? Ultimately, what this process will help you do is make sure you're not going after something that's too small, that someone has already tried and already failed, or something that just might not be as interesting to you as the other idea. So again, the first step in all of this is really to say, can we go through a big brainstorming session, identify what area we're interested in, what are some potential ideas, and then narrow them down to what are the most intriguing. Now understand that you might come up with a list of 50 ideas to start out with, and maybe 10 of them that you do research into. What you actually should be important to know about is, you may find that first idea, when you actually run them through the rest of the process, isn't very good. You might find your second idea isn't very good when you actually test it in the customer marketplace. The idea here really is to give yourselves as many ideas as possible that you've done enough validation on so that you can run them through the rest of the process. It's funny too, I'll tell you this, as an entrepreneur, oftentimes what we do is we chase the, the idea that we have first. And so one of the key things that I think is really important as you're thinking about it is you don't just want to chase the first idea you have. You want to start here to be identifying what is the problem you find most interesting with a little bit of research. You're identifying that problem and why you think you want to solve it. The second part of it is understanding what's the solution. So why do you think the solution will work at a basic level? And then you're also trying to understand in the solution, is it a big market we're going after? Are there other competitors? Are the margins important? And finally, you're trying to identify who are the likely customers for this solution. So it's problem, solution, and customer. So when you're doing this evidence-based idea generation, there's a couple things that are important. Don't fall in love with your first idea. It's easy to basically have something that you really want. I want to create Facebook for dogs. It's a terrific idea. But if you step back a little bit and actually evaluate that, you might realize, like, ah, someone already tried that. Actually, someone already did, multiple people. <laughs> so, um, so take a minute and actually evaluate these ideas. Again, you're not spending a ton of time doing it. You'll, you'll be able to go through this process in less than a week. So actually the idea here is to spend less than a week actually going through the initial idea generation to come up with something good. Use Google as your friend. It turns out that almost every idea has probably been done before. 
And so if you're going to work on something, understand why other people haven't failed or who is already doing it well, rather than basically spend a lot of time going after something that's not going to work. Now again, this isn't to say this is your startup. This is just a way to generate ideas and validate that they're interesting. A couple key things to know about any idea you're going to start going after. Do market research to understand what is the market size. It's an important one to know because ultimately it is just as hard to go to try and solve a problem in a $1 million market as it is in a $1 billion market. So make sure that you know if you're going to go after it, is it big enough to matter. The ultimate point here is understanding, is this a problem worth solving? So ultimately, you're getting an idea ready for the next phase, which is customer discovery. I'm going to send out a list, kind of a one-pager on how this process works, as well as I have a little bit of a summary on how you actually do a research report that has kind of the headlines on, on what's important. So I'll give you guys some tools. How should you think about competition in this early idea generation phase? And I think it's important to know that at this point, you're not necessarily, you shouldn't be worried about whether or not that this competition is, should restrict you from going after it. It's important to actually road test some of those things. So for example, if you know that if you're going after the doctor realm and you hear that company X actually is offering some kind of a solution, when you're talking in customer discovery, you can ask them, so what do you think about working with this company or that company to understand if they're satisfied with the solution? The other important thing is why you do this part up front is when you start to do customer discovery, you don't want to be surprised when you bring this idea out to someone. Let's just say you bring it to doctors and they're like, duh, haven't you heard of this company that's been doing this for five years? It just will help you make sure that you get the most out of your interviews.